What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things clinical psychology. If you are interested in clinical psychology, if you're applying to clinical psychology school, or if you're already in clinical psychology, I give you the best tips that I have for clinical psychology students. We're gonna be talking about the difference between what is the difference between neuropsychology and clinical psychology. And this is a question that I get oftentimes in the other videos that I've done before that basically clinical psychologists, they do different types of therapy, they do different types of assessment, and in, in some states they can potentially prescribe medication. And so what neuropsychological or what neuropsychologists do that is different from psychologists, neuropsychologists basically do the same thing as clinical psychologists. The only difference is that they may go way further into the test and get way more into the diagnosis of a particular mental illness or a particular neural illness. And so that, again, could be actually diagnosing someone with ADHD, actually diagnosing someone that is on the autism spectrum scale. So it might be kind of confusing. So a clinical psychologist does the testing, does the psychological testing for mental illness and things like that. And they do a little bit of the neuropsychological testing as well. A neuropsychologist is primarily focused on neuropsychological testing. So they might go further in depth with diagnosing people that may have neurological conditions. Now, what's really cool is that in some clinical psychology schools, in fact, most clinical psychology schools will offer a neuropsychological tract, which means that once you get into the program, once you get into the overall clinical psychology program, you can decide to become a generalist, which is basically working with all populations, or you can focus your studies, take certain classes, go into certain practicum sites and externship sites to become a, a neuropsychologist. Your career path is gonna look a little bit different after you graduate, right? The clinical psychologist basically just has to do an internship and maybe a postdoc in order for them to become a licensed clinical psychologist. If you wanna be a neuropsychologist, you're gonna go into that track and you're gonna take maybe a basically all the same classes as a normal clinical psychology student, but your focus might be way more, way more defined within the neuropsychology realm. And with that, once you graduate from the program, you might just do some extra internships or extra postdocs to get that focus and become a licensed neuropsychologist. And neuro licensed neuropsychologists can do all the same things that a clinical psychologist can do. But a clinical psychologist can't necessarily do all the things that a neuropsychologist can do, right? So that's that's the thing is that neuropsychology is more of a focus, a more of a specialized focus in the clinical psychology realm. In terms of the locations that neuropsychologists work, so neuropsychologists, you're gonna mainly find them in working with hospitals, working in hospitals, working with doctors and nurses and nurse anesthetists and all those different things. They could also do their own private practice. And so they could also do their own ADHD testing, autism spectrum, psychological testing, right? And so most people that wanna become neuropsychologists don't necessarily care so much for the therapy side of things. They mostly care for the assessment, the testing and the diagnosis. So to kind of summarize everything, neuropsychologists are focused on memory, learning, right? They're, they're really focused on the neurological parts of your brain and diagnosing those conditions or giving different interventions to help people figure out what's going on in their brain and how it's affecting their behavior. Whereas psychologists are focused on the behavior, they're focused on the therapy. They can do a little bit of the assessment, they can do a little bit of the testing, but they're focused mainly on the therapy side of things to help people figure out what's going on or help people basically cope with what they're going through. So basically how this could look like in real life, you you have a potential patient that may have dementia, may not have dementia, but let's say they go to a clinical psychologist and they're just going through therapy. The clinical psychologist refers them to a neuropsychologist because they have thoughts, they have, you know, basic assumptions that that person might have dementia. The neuropsychologist is gonna be the one to go through all the testing, all the intervention, all the assessment to actually diagnose this person, whether they have dementia or whether they have something else. Then the neuropsychologist may refer that person right back to the clinical psychologist. And that clinical psychologist, now that they know the specific diagnosis, they can find a different type of therapy or a specific type of therapy to help that patient go along, help that patient cope with whatever they're going. So that's kind of like a real life example of how neuropsychologists can work and psychologists can work, right? They both can do the same thing. Neuropsychologists 
colleges can do a little bit more in terms of the testing and assessment stuff, but they're working together to help people, whether it's the therapy side or the intervention and diagnosis side. Hopefully that helps guys. I hope that made a lot of sense. If you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, but if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.